my name is Jenny. I am a student of English literature. This is my story. I want to tell you about my life in London. I want to tell you about my fantastic teacher. You can read my story and learn English with me. It is a beautiful day of summers. I am traveling on a train and two women are on the train with me. The women are sitting opposite me. They are speaking English. I don't understand much. I am studying English, but I am a beginner. I don't know many words. I began speaking to the women. I said some words in basic English. The women understood what I wanted to say, and that made me happy. I said that I want to learn English. The women told me that they are from England, going home from a conference. Our conversation was ten minutes long. The next station was mine. I said goodbye. The women gave me their address and phone number. They told me that I can visit them in England. Then we said goodbye. After this meeting, I worked on my English every day. I translated texts and watched films in English. In six months, my English improved. It was good now, but I wanted to learn more. I went to London. I wanted to study English from London. When I was in London, I joined school. My first lesson was on Monday. I met my teacher and other students in the class. My teacher was a young and fine lady. She was very nice and humble. We introduced ourselves and then proceeded with the lesson. Our teacher had a question for us. She wanted to know our general knowledge about the language. Our teacher told us that she can teach through a very effective method to learn English. This method was very simple. Our teacher tells us that we would not have to study. We won't have to read textbooks, but we would have to use English a lot in our daily lives. It turned out very effective for me. I did not like studying from the textbooks because they confused me. Then we spoke about what is important when we learned a new language. Our teacher told us language is a purpose and a mode for communication. We need languages to communicate. Languages help us to express ideas and thoughts. So when you learn a new language, the best method is to use the language to express our feelings and to communicate with other people as well. And this is what we will do in our course. We will speak and make use of English language a lot. Many students try to remember new words. They also study grammar rules. And these students don't use English for speaking. They study about the language, but they don't use the language. There is a difference. Of course, you need to learn new words and grammar. But you don't have to study them. You need to practice them on a daily basis. In this course, I wanted to show a very simple and effective method on how to learn vocabulary and grammar. I like what our teacher says. Our lesson continues. We spoke about our hobbies and what we like to do in our time. We spoke in pairs or with our teacher. I enjoyed taking classes. I am really happy. This system of learning turned out to be very good and effective for me. Chapter 2 How I Learned Vocabulary I went to school on Tuesday again. One of the students asked the question which was interesting for me. She asked, What is the best way to learn new words? Our teacher told there are many things you can do to learn new words. I will tell you what is statistically the most effective way for learning new words. It is reading. When people read, they learn new words of their language. 
they learn twice as fast as people who don't read. It is good to read for at least 30 minutes every day. I want to show you what you should do if you want to get the maximum profit from reading. First, it is very important that the book or text you read is interesting for you. It is important that you enjoy reading the book. The book can be a nice story, or it can be fictional or non-fictional. Whatever your interest is for the book, don't read the text, which isn't interesting for you. When you don't know many words, you can get frustrated. You always want to enjoy everything you do while using the language. It is effective to choose a text that is interesting and also okay for your level. When you read the text and you see a word which you don't understand, you should take a dictionary and find the word in the dictionary. Then you would look at its meaning. This will make a better understanding of the text, and your knowledge of the text will be increased. You won't have to write the word anywhere. The word will automatically get locked in your brain, and you will always remember its meaning wherever you will see this word again. Every time when there is a new word for you, you will do the same. Reading also has another great advantage. When you read, you learn new words, and you also learn how each word is connected to other words in the sentence. You can see how to link the words correctly. This way of learning new words is very effective. Try it and you will see how fast you can learn new words. Then we continue with the lesson. We speak about the situation in England and about the best jobs for students. This is good for me because I want to get a job. I want to do something in my spare time after school. I asked other students if they know from where I can find a job. They told me that I should go to a job center. The job center offers a lot of jobs, especially for students. This is good for me. I am happy that I know from where I can find a job. When my day at school was over, I went to the job center. I did not know what job I could do. So I asked the lady at the job center, what is the best job for a student? The lady told me that they have some good jobs for students. She told me that I can be a cleaner or a waitress in a cafe. I told the lady that I have no experience with these jobs. She told me that my English is good enough to work at the cafe. The training was not difficult, and I can have more chances to speak English than being a cleaner. She told me that I can start my job on Thursday. It is all good for me. I am happy that I have a job where I can practice English. When you want to learn new words, effectively read for 30 minutes every day. On Wednesday, I went to school again. There is one student in the class who is quieter than the others. He is from South Korea. When our teacher asked if we had any questions for her, this student from Korea said that he has a question. He said that he has a big problem with pronunciation. He knew that his pronunciation is not very good. But he did not know how to improve it. He doesn't speak much because he doesn't have others to listen to his bad pronunciation. He said that he reads and watches films in English a lot. He understands very well, but he also wants to improve speaking. He asked if there is something he could do to be better at pronunciation. When my teacher heard this, she said, Okay, I will tell you something about pronunciation and how to practice it. I will also teach you techniques that can help all of you to become better at pronunciation. First, we have to look at why students have a problem with pronunciation. 
When we speak, we have to move our mouth, use muscles in our mouth. We all do that. The problem is that when you speak English, sometimes you use your muscles the same way you would use them in your native language, and then your pronunciation is different from the pronunciation of native speakers. If this happens to many students learning English, almost everybody has a little different pronunciation than they should have. In fact, it is not a big problem because usually people understand what you want to say, even if your pronunciation is not perfect. However, you can work on your pronunciation and make it better by a great technique which can help you a lot. The name of this technique is shadowing. The technique is very simple. When you do shadowing, you simply copy the sound which you hear. When children learn their first language, they learn it by copying. They copy after their parents again and again, and one day their pronunciation becomes perfect. If you can learn English pronunciation the same way, this is what you can do. You take some videos or audio recordings which are not very fast and which you can understand very well. You listen and you copy what you hear when you hear it. That is all. Our teacher went to YouTube.com and searched for the shadowing technique. She found good videos where the shadowing technique was very well demonstrated. We watched the video, then we all tried to do shadowing for about three minutes. Our teacher told us shadowing is also good when you are preparing for a presentation in English, and you want to have good pronunciation before the presentation. You can go to some place where you are alone and you can do shadowing for about 10 minutes. You will see how much it will help you to have better pronunciation during the presentation. This was very interesting for me. I hadn't heard about this technique before. When the lesson finished, I went to the school reception. I asked the lady if there are any sport activities at school. I would like to do some sport in England. The lady at the reception said, yes, we have a table tennis team and a football team. The football team has training today at five o'clock. I was very happy because sport is very important in my life. I went to the training of the football team. I met a lot of players from different countries. The players are from Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, Argentina, and Italy. I liked the training. I was very happy that my time in England started well. I have a great teacher. I also have some new friends from my football team. Also, tomorrow I am starting my job as well. When you want to have good pronunciation, repeat after native speakers. On Thursday, I went to school again. We had a new student in our class. Her name is Elizabeth, and she is from Italy. At the beginning of the lesson, my teacher asked Elizabeth some questions. My teacher knows Elizabeth because Elizabeth visited her class one year ago. It was a class for beginners, and it was only for two weeks during summer holiday. When Elizabeth speaks, she speaks beautifully. Her pronunciation is very good, and she is fluent. My teacher was very happy, and she told Elizabeth, Your school in Italy must be very good. Elizabeth says, I don't go to any school. I learn English at home. I use techniques that I learned from you. I do a lot of reading, shadowing, and thinking aloud. I try to think more in English than in Italian. This is how I work on my English. The two weeks which I spent last summer at your class helped me a lot. 
You showed me the way. I know how to work on my English every day. This is why I wanted to join your class again. Because one year ago I was a beginner and now I can speak English. I want to learn from you again. My teacher was very happy when she heard these words. She appreciated Elizabeth for her hard work. It is all very interesting for me. I already know about reading. I also know the shadowing technique. But Elizabeth also speaks about thinking aloud. I don't know what it is. So I asked our teacher what is thinking aloud. Our teacher replied, It is a very effective technique. You have to have strong motivation to learn English if you want to have benefits from this technique. It is also good to know that for some people, this technique is a little crazy. But when you start to think aloud, your English can be better very fast. I said I have strong motivation. I don't care if the technique is crazy. If it helps, I want to learn it. Can you teach us this technique? Okay, it is actually very simple. You think in your native language all day every time. It is normal. Now you can start to think in English. And when you start to think in English, then you can think aloud. You simply say aloud what you think. It is all. I say it is very simple. Why is it very effective? Our teacher says maybe you can ask Elizabeth. She uses this technique. Maybe she can tell you more about this technique. Then our teacher asked Elizabeth if it is okay for her to speak about her experience with thinking aloud. It is not a problem for Elizabeth. She said, When I started with this technique, it wasn't easy. I started with very simple sentences. For example, I am can speak English. It is good that I can speak English. I want to be better. I need to practice every day. I don't know many words, but I can use these words. I can say my ideas with these words. I can do this. This is great. The sentences are really simple. But at the beginning, there was one problem. My thinking in Italian was long and complicated. And I was not able to say in English exactly. But I said in Italian. I needed to find a simpler form for English. To think in simple English was the hardest part. But after some time, it was normal for me to think in English. Then something interesting happened. I met a man from Australia. He was on holiday in Italy. I was still a beginner, but we started to speak English. I could see that I was able to speak with him without having problems. My sentences were simple and short, but I was able to speak. I didn't translate in my head from Italian to English. After the meeting with the man from Australia, I started to use thinking aloud more. This technique helped me a lot with my speaking. I still use it every day. It is really a very effective technique. Our teacher thanked Elizabeth for her experience with thinking aloud. I wanted to use this technique because I also wanted to get better at speaking. When you want to speak English fluently, think aloud. I want to give you an extra piece of advice when you want to learn English. Read, listen, think, and speak. Do each activity for 40 minutes every day. You can read, listen, and shadow hearing our basic English stories. After my first lessons, I was happy. My teacher was nice and I learned new things. We talked about speaking English and she said it's important to use English a lot. 
Reading helps, too. The teacher told us about a fun way to improve speaking. It's called shadowing. You copy what you hear in videos. I tried it, and it was cool. I also joined a football team, and now I have friends from Brazil, Japan, and other countries. On Thursday, we got a new friend, Elizabeth. She's from Italy and speaks English very well. I asked her how she learned, and she told us about thinking aloud. It sounded funny, but she said it helps a lot. You talk in English about what you're thinking. It's like talking to yourself, but in English. Our teacher liked the idea, and I started doing it. I feel a bit silly, but it helps me speak better. Now, every day I read, listen, think aloud, and speak in English for 40 minutes each. It's not too hard, and I'm getting better. Elizabeth is my inspiration. She learned English at home and now speaks fluently. I want to be like her. My adventure in England is just beginning. And I'm excited to learn more and make new friends. One day our teacher shared a secret to learn new words faster. She said, Read for 30 minutes every day. I like reading, so I started doing it. The teacher said it's important to read something interesting. It can be a story or any topic you like. If you find a word you don't know, use a dictionary. It helps you understand better. Soon I found myself learning new words without even trying. In class, we also talked about jobs. I wanted a job to practice English, so I went to a job center. They suggested being a waitress or a cleaner. I thought being a waitress would be fun, and they said my English was good enough. The training was easy, and I started my job happily. Working in a cafe gives me a chance to use English a lot. Now I can order coffee in English, and it feels great. London is a big city, and there's so much to do. I joined a table tennis team and played with people from different countries. It was exciting. I also visited some famous places like parks and museums. Sometimes I get lost, but people are friendly and help me find my way. Being in London is an adventure every day. I'm learning English, making friends, and having fun. I can't wait to see what happens next in my English journey. Every morning, I wake up in London excited for a new day of learning. I chat with my flatmates and we practice English together. They are from Spain and Germany and we share stories about our countries. It's funny how we sometimes mix up words, but we laugh and help each other. Learning English is a daily adventure, and my friends make it even more enjoyable. During lunch breaks, I explore local markets. The sellers are friendly, and I get to practice English while buying fresh fruits and snacks. Simple conversations like asking for prices or saying thank you help me become more confident in using English outside the classroom. Learning is not just in books. It's in everyday moments, too. In the evenings, I attend language exchange events. These gatherings bring together people from various backgrounds. We play language games, share our favorite phrases, and laugh at our language mishaps. It's a fantastic way to practice English in a relaxed setting. I've made friends from all around the world, and we encourage each other to improve our language skills. As time goes by, I notice how my English is getting better. I can express myself more easily, and understanding others becomes smoother. My teacher praises our efforts.
and it feels great to see progress. I realize that learning a language is a journey, and every step forward is an achievement. I celebrate the small victories, like having a full conversation without hesitating or understanding a movie without subtitles. Each day brings new opportunities to grow, and I'm eager to see where my language journey takes me next. In the weekends, I explore London's parks and attend language meetups. These gatherings allow me to practice English while enjoying the city's beauty. Whether it's having a picnic in Hyde Park or visiting a language cafe, I always find ways to immerse myself in the language. Learning English is not just a goal. It's a lifestyle that brings joy and connections. As my time in London continues, I reflect on how far I've come. From basic English on a train to confidently conversing with people from different countries, my journey is filled with memorable moments. I'm excited about what the future holds for my English learning adventure. Maybe more friends, new challenges, or even a visit to the famous landmarks I've been reading about. One thing is for sure, every day is an opportunity to learn, grow, and enjoy the rich tapestry of the English language.